This is how dark it is in the middle of the day in my office slash my parents' basement. And yeah, I know I live like a slob. But that's all about to change thanks to YouTube. And in this video, I'm using three massive TVs to create a wall-sized virtual window to wherever I want in the world. So my first mission of this build is to see if these TVs will even run in portrait mode or if I just spent $3,000 on three of the biggest TVs I've ever seen in my life and have no practical use for. <laughs> and after letting one run for a week or so it seemed like it wasn't going to quit out on me and in the meantime I went on with some basic renovations of the basement. It hasn't been painted down here since the basement was finished probably about 20 years ago and there were some pretty mean high school parties in here back in the day so it was pretty gross once the pot lights lit everything up. But with some general cleanup and fresh paint everything's looking good as new. So I'm going to be mounting three 75 inch TVs on this back wall and then I'm going to be basically building a window frame on the outside of them so you can't even really tell they're TVs. But first I'm going to have to extend a bit of this bulkhead over to the right side wall so that I have the exact same height to work with over the entire width of the wall. So using some 2x3s I just framed out about a 1 foot wide bulkhead extension. I also made sure to leave a half inch gap on both sides so that the half inch drywall I put on will line up flush with the rest of the bulkhead. And I'm just going to kind of time lapse through this part because I'm not here to tell you how to do drywall work. So now it's time to get into the actual build. So first I took some measurements to figure out exactly where I'm going to need to mount this TV mount. So this is just a regular slim TV mount that I got on Amazon. And I'm even going to mount it the regular way. The only difference is the plates that go on the back of the TV, I'm going to turn 90 degrees so that the TV will hang in portrait mode instead of landscape. I also had to tie on some extended strings for the release cable so I could reach it from the bottom of the TV, which used to be the side. This releases the TV from the wall mount just in case you ever have to take it off the wall. Then I marked out the studs to mount the wall plate. Then with everything level I marked out the drill points for the lag bolt. And will it support holding the TV on its side? I really have no idea. Then this is one of the uh, higher risk things I've done on YouTube, but I lifted this 65 pound TV into place by myself because no one else was home. 
Then it turns out these TVs aren't really meant to be mounted sideways because the bottom of the TV was about 4 inches out from the wall and the top was only 2 inches. So I 3D printed out a bunch of different size spacers and played around with changing out the top spacers until they were pretty much the same from side to side. I also plugged in whatever cables I needed before putting it back on the wall because once it's up there there's really no way to access this at all, even before it's framed in. But all I'm using is one HDMI cord out and a USB extension cable. And after doing this a couple times with a couple different sizes of spacers, I got it pretty close to being about 4 inches out from the wall on both sides. So now I'm going to start framing in the TVs and to start off with that I'm going to build a little electronics cabinet at the bottom. So I got out my planer I haven't used in probably 8 months. And then I planed down some regular framing grade 2x10 lumber. I decided to use 2x10s because I needed a length of about 11 feet and even though something like maple plywood might have looked better in the grain, it would have looked a lot worse because I would have had to have a break mark because it's only 8 feet long. So I'm just going to sand and fill and sand and fill this framing lumber until it looks about as good as I want it to. Then on one of the pieces I measured out this little box that's going to end up being an access port to get into the electronics behind it. So I cut some starting points using an oscillating multi-tool. And then cut the box out using the jigsaw. I didn't want to drill into the cutout part because I'm going to use that as the door itself. Then after some more sanding, I glued on these strips of quarter inch plywood onto the back side to be a doorstop. Then my plan was just to use some of these little magnet strips to hold the door in place. But they weren't quite strong enough to hold the weight of the wood, so instead I just used these two sided velcro tabs. Then I just use a 1 inch Forstner bit to drill a finger hole. And these are ready to load up in my work truck to take home. Back at home I measured the finished length I need to cut the board to. But before I install these, I'm going to have to cut away some trim and then build some bracing. So I just built these L brackets out of some 2x4 cutoffs. And these are going to be screwed into the wall and then it'll give some support to both the top plate and the face plate of this cabinet.
Then I brought in the top plate and I had already cut out a few notches for the TV cables with the jigsaw beforehand. And then I screwed this into the baseboard and used some wood filler to fill the screw holes. Then I got the TVs into their final position and I used some shims to support the side and make sure everything was completely level and an equal distance apart. Then I stained the wood as close to the rest of the baseboards as I could. Even though it's probably not the color I would pick today, I wanted it to match everything as close as possible. And after a couple coats of that, I just finished this wood off with some polyurethane and a foam roller. And after the first coat dried for a half a day, I sanded it down quickly with a maroon pad and gave it its final finishing coat. And as a finishing touch on this base cabinet, I 3D printed this little plastic cover that I'm gonna use to cap off the finger hole and make it look a little more finished. Next, I screwed and glued in some blocking to both sides of the wall. And then using my Craig track saw jig, I cut down another 2x10 to the width I needed, which for me was about 6 inches. Then I screwed these in place into the blocking. These boards are going to be painted to basically look like the walls and then the rest of the frame going around the TVs is going to be all one black piece. Then I measured out the width for the rest of the frame which for me turned out to be almost exactly 10 feet. Then it's back to the track saw to cut a bunch of strips of 2 inch wide board. I cut these pieces about a sixteenth of an inch short so there's a little bit of wiggle room because this frame is going to be all one piece that's screwed into place but it's actually going to be removable so you can access the TVs or switch them out at any point by just taking out a few screws. For the vertical pieces of the frame, I'm using this Craig pocket hole jig to drill two holes in each end of each board. Now I'm going to take this frame out and get to painting and finishing. 
But first I'm filling in those pocket holes with these pocket hole dowels. And then I countersunk some screw holes with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I drilled about 10 of these around the frame and these screws will attach this frame piece to the rest of the build. And then once everything's installed I'll just plug these up with some black caps and then you won't even really see them but they'll still be accessible to take this frame piece out at any time. Then I gave everything one good last sand in with some 120 grit. And to paint it, I just used regular interior wall paint in eggshell sheen and I just got straight black color. And after three light coats, that is a really nice smooth matte steel look to it. So when the frame covers up the infrared sensor on one of the TVs, obviously the remote signal won't get to it, so I'm going to have to install one of these IR repeaters. So basically there's one cable that plugs into this box that's going to sit outside the frame that'll collect the signal from the remote, and then I'll plug in three more cables that repeat that signal that'll be stuck right onto the IR sensor on each TV. This way one remote will control all three TVs too. A couple last things, I'm going to add some LED cabinet light that I definitely should have fished the wire through before I closed everything in. Also, as I'm pretty impressed with the IR sensor on this one, it would go through the cabinet itself and even a few rooms in the house. And as the last finishing touch, I just used some black caulking to seal up any of the remaining gaps and cracks. Also, I've got to say, I've worked with lots of caulk over my years building stuff, but I've never really had a need for black caulk before, but I think it's safe to say I'm a big black caulk guy now. Now the build's pretty much done, but I'm going to quickly build up a workbench and get this room looking like a room. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this in this video, but I might do a video in the future making something like this like a desk because I made the legs out of 2x6s and the top out of just normal maple plywood and I can't believe how good this thing looks in the end with 4 hours to build it and as cheap as it was to build. Now you're probably wondering how this window works and what you can all do with it. 
Well, I have a few different ideas. First, I wanted to use one of these all-in-one computers and then set up each TV as its own monitor and then just be able to full screen video across that. And that would probably work, but the computer I got wasn't nearly powerful enough to control three 4K monitors at one time. I also had to download a specialty player to be able to full screen the video over three monitors, so if you wanted to watch any like Netflix or anything, you wouldn't be able to full screen it across all three monitors. Next I tried one of these cheap processing units that should take the signal from one HDMI, like a cable box or a PS4 or really anything, and then automatically split it across all three TVs. But this thing was cheap and unsurprisingly a piece of junk. I tried to run it on the computer but it basically just crashed the computer and the aspect ratio and quality was way off. So this processor specifically is out. So what I ultimately settled on was just having an individual USB stick for each TV. I'd then split up the video file into TV1, TV2, and TV3. And then I can just use the remote and go into Roku Media Player and play any of the files and they'll start at the exact same time and make a pretty damn good user-friendly window. So it's safe to say my workshop, which I've pretty much just now turned into my living room, is a lot cooler than it used to be. I have about 30 different scenes from all over the world already that repeat themselves in about 10 minute loops, and I'll have many more to come from future trips. But so far, it's pretty cool being able to do yoga in space. Or just hang out by the ocean. or work wherever I want in the world. So the total budget for this build was about $2,300 in TVs and about $1,000 in other costs. Unfortunately, with the way it's set up right now, it is really only good for a window since I have to download the files and split them up on my computer beforehand. But in the future, I'd like to be able to buy a better processing unit and then I could play PS4 or watch TV or hockey games or play Wii Golf or really whatever I want to do with this thing. One thing I think that'd be really cool would be having a dedicated camera that's permanently mounted on the deck out back and fed into the processing unit. And then I could have a live feed 24 hours a day virtual window of my backyard. But you'll have to wait for the next video for that. And until then, creativity is really the only limit of the functionality of this. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll see what I get up to next. Also, you might have noticed these random numbers all the way through the film. These weren't put here by accident, and there's six of these numbers in total, including this one as the last one. Go back and write down all six, and then message me on my Instagram at DrewBuildStuff with all six of the numbers. And the first three people that do that are going to get one of these black walnut charcuterie boards that I make myself. These each sell for 200 bucks on Etsy. Till next time, thanks again, and let me know in the comments below some cool or unique scene ideas for this window that I haven't already thought of. And I'll pin the most creative comment.